of the nations isn't our happiness, right? Al gil ka'amim. Um, and we we said Ad Kadei Kach Lamalvim says that we got mixed up and thought that Egypt was our inheritance or Egypt was our birthplace. Um, and Hashem says at some point that this is uh, not going to last. Last and the last things we saw, if you saw, there were two psukim that dealt with the the prophets, right? And there are two different readings of the prophets talking about the false prophets or the real prophets, whatever it is. It comes out to be that Amisel is uh, realizing that the, the prophecies they received were not, um, not good for them, uh, uh, whatever, wh- excuse me, if they're false prophets, if the false prophets were false, that's what they're understanding now, and or will understand shortly, and that the good prophets were good. <laughs> all the parshanim we saw, all three of our parshanim that we go with, Rashi, Radak, and the Malbi mentioned Zechariah, who was murdered in Beit HaMikdash. Um, we said that it is a major um, moment in Zechariah's life, in Zechariah's life to... Um, <laughs> in Zechariah's life. In Hosea's life, that his Rebbe was murdered in Beit HaMikdash as a prophet and a Kohen. We said it's mentioned uh, met a couple times already. Damim Damim Nagal, we said in, in Farrakh Gimel, if I'm not mistaken, or Dalet. And, um, and, and, and here also is referencing this idea of, of that they would put traps in front of their, right? Look at the Pasuk Chet, the last. So, fair fry me melohai, Navi pach yakush al kol drachav. A prophet has a trap on all his ways, mastema bevet elohav. Hatred or a, uh, or, or, or a plan, an evil plot in the house of the Lord, of his Lord. I mean, that's. Can't get any more uh, graphic than that one, and, and explain exactly where this thing is happening. Tov. Um, now, now, pasuk tet is actually very important. I believe that's where we're up to. Mm-hmm. Pasuk tet, and then yud. So tet is going to be a a a, a, a good one. It's going to bring us also bezrat Hashem until we get in perik the next chapter. In perik yud, we're also going to meet Giva. Okay, and. It's mentioned here in Pasuk Tet. And Giva is going to give us a whole new level of, uh, of uh, critique that's going on here. Mm-hmm. They have deepened their mushchatut. Um, what? It's a Tet. Shichetu uh, is to be mushchat. It's to be um, well. I have to get back my English. No, 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 no. It's with a tet. Shichetu is to be corrupt. Right, corrupt. That's what it says in English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So they deepen their corruption like give Yizkor avonam. Hashem will remember your their their sins and will uh, take re- re- retribution for their actions. So what's Giva? Unfortunately, we know what Giva is. <laughs> you guys could look at your source sheet. We have Rashi. Rashi is going to give us some machlokat here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ready? Hold on to your seats. Kimei Giva. Yesh omrim ze Givat binyamim bapilegesh. What are, what are they referencing here? Is that the one where the Pilegish was killed in Binyamin and Binyamin and there was in Binyamin and they went to a civil war with Binyamin because of that? Pilegish Bagiva. What is being referenced here? Very good, Ezra. Sure. One is referenced it is Zegivat Binyamin Ba Pilegish. It's not Shoftim Tet. It's a mistake. It's Yud Tet. Very good. The Yeshomrim Zegivat Shaul Sheshalu Lehem Melech Umardu Bidivre. Hanavi. Mm-hmm. Now, this is fascinating. Both Perushim are fascinating. Okay, first of all, it's interesting. The, 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 the Hoshea, when he has to see, he says, you guys are so bad, you're like, you're like the Giva, right? He has to think of something that they're doing. That they're, they're so bad, it's like this, right? If I have to say, you're as bad as a teenager, right? I don't know, something like, like, you, gotta, like you have to find like the word that's that's the worst thing you could think of. So, so 
Now, it could be just searching for the uh, worst uh, t- time of, of Am Yisrael. It could also be a deeper meaning, of course. What exactly is there? So, so Rashi gives us two Maslulim. Let's have to start with the second Maslul, which is a little more challenging. The second Maslul, he says, is like when you guys came and asked for a king and went against what the prophet said. What did Shmuel say when they came for the king for the first time? Shmuel says, no, against you're going against, you're going against, he says they're going against, and then Hashem says, not going against you, they're going against God. In other words, there was something wrong with that. Everyone gets confused with that thing. Like there's a mitzvah, what, what's, what exactly is this? Thing? So we're not, we're not going to delve into that that much. But we do have to know that here already, Hoshen, he's going to be saying this throughout the next chapters, it's going to be brought up, flushed out more. Uh, different perushim are also going to bring it out more. This concept of there's something wrong with Malchut Yisrael from the very, very, very beginning. Wait, Malchut Yisrael? Or like, well, it's Malchut oh. everyone. Malchut Bichlal. Malchut, okay? So it's Shaul. Um, Shaul is before, before they divide into Israel and Yehuda. But Shaul is the first king, right? Mm-hmm. So... So in Miku Shichetu Kimea Giva, says Rashi, there has been corruption from the beginning, from the days of Giva. You guys don't understand what kingship is going to be. And we're going to play this out later, but I'll say now already what the problem is. This is what he's been saying. If you guys remember quite a few times, the, the king has been coming under, under, a, uh, under a, a critique in these last couple chapters, more than we saw in the beginning. The king, the ministers. You guys remember all this stuff? Anyone with me? Right? They're they're, they're more they're more uh, they're getting upset at the kings of of. Uh, and he has right, we have a different level. Rosh has has, has has been critiquing also the the kings. What is the job? What is the purpose of a king? What is the purpose of a king? And it's really really confusing what the purpose of a king is. Is a king a figurehead? Who I'm supposed to think is, um, uh, or, or so differently, not a figurehead. Is the king the answer to my problems, or is he a conduit? I would sort of say, or someone who allows me to get closer to Hashem through his actions and through his leadership. What is a king? Is he the answer, or is he? The helper, I would say. Is a king a technical, I would say almost, um, solution to help me or take Am Yisrael to get closer to its job, to its mission, to who it's supposed to be, what we're supposed to be doing here? Or is a king an end to himself? And that from the very beginning is not clear. When Shmuel, when Hashem says to Shmuel, Lo ma'asu ki'im oti ma'asu, it didn't seem that they're ma'asu at Hashem there. They really weren't. They weren't, but Hashem's talking long term. Hashem's talking long term. Hashem, then when Shmuel's going to say, you're king, he's going to do this, and he's going to do this, and he's going to do this. The first kings didn't really do that. Shaul didn't. David didn't. Shlomo may have. And then afterwards, it happens in different, different... In other words, the kings both view themselves as it, but they also view... Um, the, the people view the king as the epitome of, 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 of our society and possibly, I don't need God anymore. I don't need Hashem anymore. That's... <laughs> let me say the one second. That's how it always was. The king was always the epitome of mortal society. And the question if you can go further than that. In other words, he's the epitome, and therefore he's the most we could be. But we all serve God together, and he helps us serve God. Or it ends there, at the king. As many, many ancient societies were, right? That the king was definitely on the pantheon of gods. Right. They were on the pantheon. Okay, They had lots of gods, but he was one of them. In other words, he was a human deity, right? A human god. Um, so so we, we didn't get there. Actually, it's fascinating. Baruch Hashem, Am Yisrael never, ever, from what I'm thinking of right now, never said that. Never said it's interesting. They never thought their kings were gods. Right. They, they never thought that. They never got to that level of, of... They didn't mix that up. But they did mix up 
that God's not really here anymore, or we don't need God anymore. He's sort of out of the picture. Theologically, he was around God. God, the Baal, whatever, gods. But our king was enough. We don't have to, we don't, we don't go further than that. We, God, we give the presence to, and the king is our, is our, is our leader. He's our leader. He's the one who will decide if we live or die. He's the one who will decide what our life will be around. There, there's something that the king is, uh, is, is like, a, is what I would say is a, a tachlif tasha. When you say tachlif, tachlif. He is a, right, if you use soy milk instead of milk, then your soy milk is a, an alternative. But there's a better word, a substitute. Substitute, substitute to God. In other, that, that's what it is. Not really. If you ask someone, oh, is your king your God? Oh, he's not my God. But for, for say, your whole focus is there. He, he, he's the one. Now, it looks like something very far away, but we've talked about this so many times in different classes. The basic trick that all religious people are in when we're in the world here. In other words, where is the real Who's the real answer? Is the, the, the medicine the real answer? Or is Hashem the real answer? Is my, uh, my actions and my own um, um, successes the answer? Or is Hashem's blessing me my answer? Is my army, my, my military might the answer? Or is Hashem the answer? We always get to these questions. We always hit them. And the trap throughout our lives is to suddenly realize, when one suddenly realizes, wow, I really don't think that Hashem is behind this. It's someone else. This says Hosea, if you want to like put his finger, according to this reading of Rashi, if you want to put your finger on a point where they went off, where they diverted from the real service of Joshua, Shmuel was right. The kings not emphasizing enough Hashem's presence have made themselves, Betzem, into, into a substitute God. Without serving him, right? Again, we understand, right? It's, it's a substitute God on a human level, not a substitute God in a theological way. It's on a practical way. So, uh, that was one direction, okay? The other direction is much easier to say, okay? When, when Oshea is blasting the people here, he's blasting them for. <laughs> so, I think that the kings, they probably asked it in the wrong way. That's what I heard people say, is that. They wanted to be like the other nations, is what I heard, and, and they asked for it in a different, in the wrong way. I think they probably set up the system a little bit different and wrong and everything, you know. And Again, I think that the fear that Hashem and Shmuel present there, the fear is that fear. The fear is when you don't have a king, you understand? When you don't have a king, when you don't have a, a state, you, a state could be a god too, by the way, in the same way, okay? When you don't have a state, then you have you're you're more subtle to uh, open to uh, Hashem's assistance. In other words, you you don't have someone a big brother taking care of you. The the not having a big brother taking care of you religiously often is better than when you have someone taking care of you. You know, you know it's it's a it's a not a not a pashut situation to be in because we don't really want to be in a position where you're completely open, right? I'm not gonna I don't want to. Go and be chasuf, and, and, and you're not supposed to be the small right? You're not supposed to be uh, trusting miracles. It's not how we're supposed to work. But the danger of not doing that, the more you load yourself up with securities, right, is having insurance not bitachon. Mm -hmm. Buying insurance. Are you allowed to buy insurance? It's an interesting question, right? Now, lichora, of course you should have insurance. What if I crash? I mean, X thirty percent thirty. I was car leave life in there. Car insurance, right? So I insure my car. Thirty percent there. There are there traffic accidents. You, know, it's, it's it's unfortunately it's a very very well, very I don't thing. Know, it's in Germany. You have, you're obligated to have. Well, you need. You, you, oh yeah, yeah, you everywhere, need everywhere, 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 yeah. Because it's because it's very likely that some day some something right. will happen. So it's, Right. That's, not, that's, not the, that's not the only thing. Okay, so, nahon, nahon. so these are things. Is, is that bitachon or not bitachon? Do you have bitachon and Hashem? These are questions that, that are the, the basis of, of society, of a religious society. And there are some religious societies where you can't do insurance or we don't, uh, we don't have medicine, right? You can't, go, you can't go to a doctor. It's Hashem. Don't go to a doctor. What do you mean? What is Hashem? No, to question the Gemara. The Gemara asks the question. Can you do? I but mean, all there's... all these things are Hosea is saying here in the word king, Giva, according to Rashi's explanation of Giva, 
This all, the king has a major problem in the belief system of Amisa. Okay? Okay. Okay. Tov. So, um, that was one way. The other way to explain it, of course, is going that they're mushchat like the giva. They're mushchat like the people were in Pilegesh Bagiva. In Pilegesh Bagiva, what's the story of Pilegesh Bagiva? Right? Am Yisrael is, 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 is this, they go to, uh, this guy goes with his concubine. And that whole story is messed up in the in itself. But then on their way home, they stop at Giva, right? They, they, they're close to the city Yavus. The guy says, let's go stay in Yavus. He says, what are you kidding? Crazy? We'll go live in with Goyim. We'll go to a, a city and, and sleep with Goyim. In their, in their city, it's dangerous. Let's go to Binyamin. We'll walk a little further and we'll go to Jews. Wrong choice in this case. They go to the Jews and pretty much what happens is Stom. That's pretty much what happens. Stom and all its uh, cruelty and barbarism. Um, in, in, all, in all and both in every way. And Amisel decide as a result of that that they're going to go to civil war and wipe them out. Wipe out Stom. And then so from, it goes from worse to worse. From, 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 from bad to worse. And, um, and, and this statement to say that Am Yisrael is already getting to this level of moral, there's got to be a decrepacy. Um, degradation. Degradation is good too. Moral degradation, it's better I know how to say that word. Decrepit is the word. Yeah? yeah. Okay, anyway, but their moral degradation, they're, they're so bad. They're so bad that O'Shea says this is the end. And this opens up the next part of our uh, of our. Of our um, of our chapter, okay. So let's take a look. This is something we haven't seen yet. Really, we read it, but we didn't really go into the next. Uh, th- this is the second half of the chapter, and it starts with a mashal that really is connected to the next parak more than it is to this parak in a sense. Just I'll prove it to you that it's uh, that it's very much connected to the next chapter because here it says, "Ke'anavim b'midbar matzati Israel, I found you like grapes in the desert." While parak yud starts, "Gefen bokek Israel." It is a, uh, they're a geffen. They're also a, 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 a grapevine. So, clearly there's a Kishnan between these two, uh, these, these couple prokim, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get to see them. Let's take a look at, at these prokim. Kanavim ba midbar matzat yisrael kivikura b'teina b'reishita v'aiti avotechem heima ba'u ba'al pa'or v'inazru laboshet v'yu shikutsim ke'ahavam Ephraim ka'ofi tofef kvodam mi'leida u mi'beten u mi'erayon ומשכיל <laughs> גם כי ילדון ואימתי מחמדי ויתנן ממסם אלוהי כי לא שמעו לו ויהיו נודדים בגויים. Again, it's just depressing even to read these pretty things. First of all, the, the major theme in all these chapter, in all these sukim, did anyone get that, get the theme? There's a lot of children. A lot of stories of children, of births and children. Just, uh, just quickly show you through this. Okay? The theme is very clear. Pasuk Yud Aleph, Mi Leida Umi Beten Umi Herayon, from birth, from stomach, from pregnancy. Pasuk Yud Bet, Bnehem, Ki Imi Gdilu Bnehem, right, if their children grow up. Pasuk Yud Gimel, Yotzi Al Horeg Banav, to kill his children. I'm just using the wording, okay? Ten Lahem Hashem, Mati Ten Lem, Rechem. A womb and shadaim and breasts. Okay, this idea of, of children growing with all children, um, and 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 the end, right? The last pasuk, the pasuk that's not sorry, the last pasuk, the, the second last pasuk. Huka Ephraim Shorsham Yavesh Pri Bal Yasun. They won't have fruit. They won't make fruit, which is basically a mm-hmm. bashal for children. And Gam Ki Eledun. Even if they have children, I will kill their their. The, the, the children, the mechamadeh the, bitnam, the children that they love from, from birth, from the stomach. In other words, very clear throughout here, this is the basic nose. So let's build it up as we go pasuk by pasuk, okay? 
כענבים במדבר מצאתי ישראל. I found Israel like grapes in the desert. כי ביקורה ותאנה בראשיתה ראיתי אבותיכם. Just like when I saw a, uh, a, a first fig. Ah, that's how I saw, that's how I view your, your, your forefathers, אבותיכם. Okay? Well, first of all, this is a beautiful, it's a beautiful פסוקים. Unfortunately, it has a but. But, but the, the, the Fukim themselves are so nice. I've seen like, like a Navim Bamidbar, Rashi says here, like, like, Kanavim Shem Chavivim Bamidbar. Like, like, like when you go and you see grapes in the desert, right? Can you, can you imagine what that is? You're walking in the desert, you're very hot, you're very uh, tired, you're thirsty, you're hungry, and suddenly there's a grapevine with grapes. What would you do? You, you attack it, right? You're there. You, wow. And I mean, so it says, I found a people. If you get the figure, who's the Midbar? Sometimes we call that the, the, the Bor, uh, nations. The, uh, Midbar Hamim is a term used in the prophets, right? The, 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 the wastelands of the nations. There's a wasteland of the nations. And I found these grapes. That's how, that's how, 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 how I, my yachas, you, my, my relation to you was. And like a te'ina berishita, the first te'ina, you're waiting so long for your first fig to come out. Ah, beautiful. That's how I saw your, your forefathers. What did they do, your forefathers? Hema ba'u ba'u pe'or. What did they do there? They came to ba'u pe'or, which is the chet in b'not uh, midyan, right? B'not mo'av and b'not midyan. Everyone know what I'm talking about? Chanana, you good? You know, you remember what I'm talking about? There's a it's sin that the Torah, right? in the Torah or, or, that or, 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 the, or the head of the sh- of, uh, the head of the tribe for um, Shimon was killed by Pinchas. That's right. And then after that, there was a whole entire thing of Moshe asking Pinchas, "How in the world did you know to do that?" But that's not. I'm not. I don't want to put that emphasis emphasis in Pinchas right now. Right now, the emphasis is on the sin. The sin, Am Yisrael have relations with Moabite women. It's the first time we see that happening. In other words, it's a plan. Bilam uses it straight out. He plans this. He says, when Bala comes to him and says, how do we beat them? How do we beat these people? He says, you can't fight them. What is it? Elohim shel elu sonezima. He hates immorality. They're God. That's the way to knock them down. Use, uh, use immorality. Use immorality. That's part of why Bilam is so... Uh, despised in Chabad Chazal. In this, this, con- this concept, he gave this... You guys have to understand just how powerful this statement is. Okay? That was the... That's the key to knocking Am Yisrael off. You, know, you can't fight. You can't fight them. You can't fight them. But this is what we go back to. This is... And it goes back to Giva. The according to the, the Giva. It goes back to that, that the, the, this sexual Im- Im- immorality is Hashem hates that, hates that, hates that. We talked about it many times, and the, how the land throws you out. The land can't stand that, right? So, so this is where it happened, but, but there's also another part to this. In other words, when you're willing to have these relations with outside Amim, what was the continuation of what happened in Baal Peor? Or before, or in the middle, or whatever, it was mishulav of udazara and and this 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 mistake. In other words, and that's the problem. It says again. We just read this. We just read this today, right? That what's going to happen? We read the radak, right? Where the radak was talking about shimshon. How in the world could he have married non-Jewish? Because when you marry non-Jewish women, what's going to happen? You're going to go to udazara. That's what's going to happen. They're always interconnected. You're going to go off, and and we said always oh, say we always say uh, udazara has a. Um, has a, I would say, a, a, an Evir Alav aspect, that you're not allowed to serve another god, but there's also a cultural aspect of Avodah Zarah that includes within in everything that the Torah is against, pretty much. Um, and here, he's saying, I took your, your forefathers, and what did they do? They went out and, and lost their uniqueness. They were a beautiful uh, um, um, grape in the desert, and the Sofosha Davar... They took themselves to the bushet. Let's take a look here. Look at some of the parshanim here. Okay. Sorry, Ahavam, will we go through? Yeah, we'll see what that means. Shikutim ke'avam. There's a machloket how to read that. All right. So let's take a look here um, at Rashi. Okay. Right. Rashi, Radak, and, and, and the Malbim. 
Rashi and Radak are going to follow pretty much the same the same kivun, and the Malbim is going to go somewhere else as usual. Kanavim b'midbar. Kanavim shem chavivim. Are you guys with me in Rashi and Yud? Kanavim shem chavivim b'midbar ken chivav tiat Yisrael. Kebikura b'teina. Keteina mevushelat beetz tana. Raiti avotechem. Kach niru avotechem beinai lechabevam. I love them. This is what the way uh, they, they look to me. This is how I love them. But they came to Baal Pa'or. They went off to Boshe to, to disgrace. And they are, and they became shikutsim. They became like uh, mishukats, disgusting. Ke'ahavam, when they loved Bnot Moab, says Rashi. Ke'ahavam, it's Bnot Moab. Then Hashem said, I loved you so much. I, I, so much, I, I, I wanted you so much. But you went off the, the derech, and, and, uh, and, then, and then you were, and then you were, when you started loving them, then I lost, and you turned into shikutsim. Okay? Says the Radak, V'yu shikutsim ke'avam, V'yu la'avod shikutsim ka'asher avu et b'not mo'av, V'zanu imahim v'yitu et levavam la'avod et elohem. He says, V'yu shikutsim ke'avam. When they started loving the daughters, then they started also loving the shikutsim, which is avodah zarah. Not that they became shikutzim, okay? But they began loving the Avodah Zarah, which is the shikutzim. O perush v'yu shikutzim v'lo chisaron, ki ha'oved hu shikutz. Or maybe they were shikutzim, they didn't serve shikutzim. Once you start doing Avodah Zarah, you yourself turn into a shikutz. Shekutz, right? What do you say? Shekutz? No? Shaygetz, uh, shaygetz. There's like a... Shiksa. No, there's a shikse and then a shaygetz, right? You don't say about the... the no, I think you, you do. Be, you, know, you, you haven't gone that. that uh, okay. Anyway, okay. The shagets goes with the shiksa? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, perush breishita teena rishona mevakeret vizichron zein yan lomar says the radak kemaase avot yasu banim. They're just like Am Yisrael was in the desert. I loved them. I was good to them. And they went off with bnot moav. You too do the same thing. You go off with the, with the other banot. I did good for you and you're Poshi Abi. Okay? Um, the, uh, the Radak's father has, has, a, has a little more, as a little uh, more, he says, the, by them, they were, I hate them as much as I love them. Like I used to love them, so too now I hate them. The, the, the hatred, the, the disgustingness that they got to matches the love I had for them in the beginning. And then it flipped. Wow. So these are all Sorry, Rashi, said, this the, is all Radak. Radak that was Radak's, Radak's father. Radak. Yeah, Radak brings his father. He brings different perushim. He brings three different perushim, how to read these last words. But they're all in the same b- ballpark of Am Yisrael doing something really wrong in the desert. And Hashem is critiquing Am Yisrael now. Am Yisrael was bad then and he's bad now. Okay? We're always bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have Lanut for another couple of chapters, okay? Because we're, we're going to say it. Well, I meant more for today. <laughs> says the Malbim, he says something differently a little bit, okay? He says, look at the Malbim, okay? Ka'anavim. Al ma shikatav shishchitu darkam b'avoda zara b'znut kimei ha'giva v'shal ken yizachai avonam omer sheyilmedu kal v'chomer mima sheenish et yotze mitzrayim. He says, you had to learn from the Torah. You learn from the Torah, Am Yisrael? Do you know history? Because Am Yisrael, I'm going to shorten this. I don't want to read the whole thing. He says like this. Am Yisrael were amazing when they left Egypt. They were, they were we raised them to the, after the, after the, we raised them to the highest heights. They were great. We were chosen. They were wonderful. I love them. They were Kedoshim and they were careful not to do Znut. You mentioned Shlomit ben Dibri, this, we mentioned it before uh, this morning, right? Oh, so this, there's only one who, who went off, right? So, so they, they were wonderful, but they were, they were like, the, the desert, there was no psolet, they were all beautiful, they were all perfect, they didn't fall off. With all that, when they sinned with Bnot Moav, with the daughters of Moav, I bashed them. You, on the other hand, <laughs> Right? dun kalvachomer. Do a kalvachomer, you. If I punish them, who were pretty much perfect, 
you guys, what's going to come to you? What's going to happen to you? Ready? They were important to me in my eyes in the beginning. Ephraim, he goes right into the next pasuk. You're like a, like a bird flying around. Listen to this. You guys from birth are like this, this floppy bird who flops around who I have no respect for and no kavod for and no love for. When they were born and even when they were in their mother's wombs, even in the pregnancy, they had no kavod klal, says the Malbim. No kavod for them. Why? Most of them, it's a horrifying statement. They're both, they're, most of them were born out of wedlock. Now we know which one are we're not. What? I don't know which one we're going on with them. And then so the next follow on is... Is it possible that most of the Jews... No, no, this is the Sharet HaShvatim. We don't know where they are at all. Oh, oh Baruch Hashem. These are, these are the ten tribes who have gone out and we don't know where they are anyway. <laughs> no, but whatever. whatever. Right. But again, so, yeah, this is the Maal Beams taken again. Vim ken kol sheken shiu shukutsi b'enai Hashem. Right? Hashem says, if I was mad at, the, at Am Yisrael and Moab, what do you think I'm going to relate to you guys? And here the Malvim opens up this whole thing. We talk about the children, right? The children is the story from now on. Hashem says, and it's, it's frightening, these psukim, I don't want your children. I, I don't want your children. Stop having children. When does Hashem ever say something like this? Stop having children. And this is how you read the continuation. He says, you have children. I'm going to kill them. Look at the next pasuk. Not the next, but the pasuk afterwards. We did this in this pasuk through the Malbi. Okay? He says, he says, right? If they do manage to have children and they don't die in the womb, like I want them to, I'll kill them when they become people. We'll see what that means in something, okay? So, um, um, we'll see, there are a bunch of different perushim, okay? He says, it's, they're miskenim, Rashi says, because they're going to go, oh, chaval that we raised these kids for so long, because they all die. It would have been better had they died young. And, 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 and it's chaval, that's what he goes, kigam oy lahem b'shurim They're going to go, oy! Says Rashi in one of his perushim. The people are going to say, Oh, they're dying now. Chach. Chaval, chaval, chaval. It would, it, it would have been better for everyone had they died young. We wouldn't have gone through all the tsar, and they wouldn't have to. It would have been better this way. This point of, of children, of, of Hashem saying, Don't have children anymore, is pretty much rock bottom. bottom okay? This is, this is about as far down as you can get. Okay, the whole Am Yisrael, the first mitzvah in the Torah is Purvu. It's the first mitzvah in the Torah. Pru Revu is the basis of the first bracha Hashem says to mankind before he tells them to learn Torah, before he tells them to do anything else is Pru Revu Meluataret. That is basic, and it's also the basic um, place for a tribe or for a nation that has self-respect and hope. A nation that has no hope doesn't need children. Why would you have children if I'm going to bring them to this? Why would I have children if, if, if there's nothing to live for? Or in a third way, why would I have children if all that interests me is hedonism and my own enjoyment, which he's been critiquing them beforehand. Whereas here there's like a culmination of, of a lot of the prophecies of Hosea. Okay, this gets really bad, the children. Yeah, go ahead, Shisha. Um, if he says that they shouldn't have more children, then he's saying don't do a mitzvah. Now they can kill him legitimately. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Navi who's a mevatel a mitzvah do raita. Okay, I'm not sure this is a statement that he's saying he's about don't have children right now. Right now we're in a frame, okay? Right, right now we're in a frame. Okay, it gives you, uh, gives you two tribes that maybe you could go, okay. But uh, right now it's a frame. 
Right, Ephraim gets very strong prophecies here, the, the nation of, of, of Melchit Yisrael. Um, I hear what you're saying, you know, the, but, but that's, I think that's part of what the, why this is so harif, this is so, this is so shocking, this statement. Okay? That he's saying to them, listen, Die young. You know, let me read, read Rashi in, in Yud Aleph. Amar Hanavi, you guys see Rashi in Yud Aleph? Rashi is a regular script. Amar Hanavi, Halvai viu ka'ofa zeanoded mikido. Halvai will be like this, this, this uh, bird that leaves its nest, vechadal mi pirvaruvia, and stops having children. Kach yishaklu et zaram, because they're going to lose their children, o bishat lida, O yitakel babeten, veyapilu, o bishat herayon, lo yiklotu, ki ma betza begadlam et bnehem, shem yigdilu vishikalti meadam. What, what good is it if they grow up and they're not going to kill them, says Hashem. You might as well die young. Two things, okay? When there's no hope, where's tshuva in the background here? You know, this is the, the statement here. We saw little hints of this at other chapters, but re really we always had like a, there's, there's, there's hope. There, there is something. There's something happening. Here, wow. There's no tshuva after death. You can't do tshuva after you die. There's no, it's, it's the end. And this is what he's talking about. And I want to bring back here, it's like all of Hoshea is, is, is moving into this point. Am Yisrael has lost its, oh, there's a word, like a viva something, a French word, re reason of life. Uh, Where's your French, guys? Come on. No, something like I don't know how to say it, even if you say it. Like <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Sounds good. You, you could fool me that way, yeah. Shushan could kill us here. He could bring us something in German. We'll be oh yeah, that's that must be it. Or Hanan could bring us someone from 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 India, and we wouldn't know what you're talking about. But it, you could do it. Um, but there, there's they, they've lost the reason for life. They really have. They're completely a society that has no hope. They're in the world of of, of enjoying themselves for they are. They're serving idol, idols. They're, they're committing immorality the whole time. Someone who has immorality, we talked about this before in one of the, in the chapters here in Nechon, no, no trust, no faithfulness. If you're not faithful, then why do I have children? There's, there's a certain amount of trust and responsibility that you need to have children. Right? You're not gonna, if you're not responsible, you don't have children because I don't want to have that responsibility on me. Faithfulness is another part of that. Not, un, not surprisingly, there is a comp direct correlation between immorality and not having children. I think, <coughs> unfortunately, as we see in the world, what? Being can, can, it's being selfish, and you, it's very hard to be immoral, lose your faithfulness, and still be responsible. It doesn't really go together. Because if I'm not faithful here, you can never, ever, it's important, if I'm not faithful here, I can't suddenly be faithful here. It just doesn't work in the human psyche. You can't do that. Unfaithfulness is a trait that cuts across everything. You could at certain times be faithful. It's not like you're always unfaithful. But you're, the, the, the muscle of faithfulness, you can't uh, say, okay, here I'm going to let it go. Oh, but here I'm going to be really faithful. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I always teach it when I, when I teach kids, teenagers, the shiurim before for getting married, is what I always say. They say, Right, well, there's a famous story or something. To, to, to a couple comes to a rabbi. We have a new child. Oh, rabbi, hi, we're here. You know, young couple, 20, 21, whatever. And I have a child. They're so happy. They say, Rabbi, we wanted to know when we have to start working on the chinuch of our child. What what age? And the rabbi says, Should have been already. Yeah, you're 20 years too late. <laughs> That's what he says. No, it started 20 years ago. What does that mean? It means you have to be, no, you have to be, you, your midot, you who you are, that's who your, ch your child's going to be. It's not going to be now, suddenly I have a child, okay, now I'll be good, now I'll be strict, now I'll be uh, uh, compassionate. What do, what do you think, I talk about that for children, but for also a marriage. People, I talk to different levels of society. So sometimes I'm talking to a level of society, which is, say, the, guy, the way you guys talk about girls, what do you guys talk about girls? Look at girls. Whatever, do, do these things. 
You think suddenly when you get married, you're going to be able to go like that and everything's going to be fine? No, I think that's a good thing. We don't talk much about girls at all in the first place. What? We don't talk what much mean about girls first. Oh, I'm not talking about you. Not I'm talking about you. Other people. Other people. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, no, but it doesn't have to be how you talk. You know, you're going to marry someone. Right? Right? You think that you can do whatever you want before, the anger, right? I'm very angry, I do. Oh, but when I get married, I'll change, I'll be fine. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Am Yisrael here have deepened these sins. You just told, called them like the Giva. They're like the Pilegesh Bagiva. It's, it's a serious sin, what they're talking about there. They're, 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 you, they've deepened their, their, their bad character traits so much. Forget it. Forget it. It's not going to work. Are you going to have children? What good is it going to be? Your children are going to be just like you. <laughs> That's what he says. Your children. Why would your children be any different than you? <laughs> There's nowhere to send them in Ephraim. The kings are corrupt. The, the, whole, the whole system is corrupt. What are you going to do? What are you going to teach them? The basis of Malchut Ephraim is corrupt. From the day they put the Agalim, which is the first day pretty much that Yeruvah becomes king, the whole system is corrupt. Yeah, I, I said this is not going yeah. to be a fun class. We're going to leave. Well, we said it's rock bottom, so that rock, this is rock bottom. Uh, it is. It gets, it gets a little better next chapter, but this one ends really badly. <laughs> but let's go on, okay? <laughs> Tov. Um, so maybe we'll see another another Perush here, how he spends. No, pretty much. Pretty much. They continue saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Malbim, the, the Red Oxo is not only in their children, but also all their actions aren't going to be successful. So though, just like when Hashem says he started panim, they're, they're gonna they're gonna get hester panim. Okay, hester panim is tough. Hashem's not there. He's not with you. The Radak references this statement. He started panim again. Go ahead. Go ahead, enjoy yourself. I'm go. Bye. I'm going. All right. So I mean, he's killing the kids, or he's disappearing. Whatever it is, he's very not involved positively. You guys, remember those three levels we talked about? Um, wow. So let's get to pasuk yud gimel. Ephraim kasher aiti letzur shtula benave. Ephraim lotzel horeg banav. So here it gets worse. <laughs> it could get worse, right? Okay. Um, the Malbim says things that are even, even more crazy here. I'm not going to read them, okay? But, but here, he says, you were supposed to be like Tzor. Tzor is the city, we rented it, Phoenician, Phoenician, Phoenician. Phoenician. Okay. It's Tzor, it's like, the, it's, 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 no, it's Tzidonim. on the, the Tzidonim, Tzor of Tzidon, they're, they're the, the Lebanese, Lebanese cities, they were port cities, very, very Akko. wealthy. Akko, right? It's above Akko. No, it's Tzor, so it's more north Akko of Akko. Was also it wasn't uh, taken over by, by... Akko is Akko. Sidon is Sidon. It's different. They're, they're, it's I, different people? Ken. Ken. Akko is inside the last city in Israel and Sidon is like right above it. Tzor and Sidon are... I, I have to look. I don't, I don't remember it. Yeah, but that area. Be yeah. Is Beirut on the ocean? So we're talking about cities, were major, major cities that are a very important passageway and it has the, the, the Yam and they were very, very important cities and they're successful cities. So he says, Ephraim, just like I saw Tzur planted in Naveh, Naveh is a nice, good area, that's what you were supposed to be. You were supposed to be these grapes that I found in the desert, I was going to transplant you to Israel and you would grow here. But as Yeshayahu Anavi, this, this concept of grapes, as we're going to see again, we'll talk to maybe in a few, a little bit, this grape uh, mashal, the grape parable, is a, it, uh, again and again and again, right? Yotam uses grapes, right? We saw in a, that's a Navim with a Vav. That's humble, hum, the humble. <laughs> but but it's good. <laughs> that's another song. That's in so That's a real one. Said so there. Or when 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 they talk about right your banecha kishti right ishtechaki geffen poriabi or kete in tehillim. 
Ken, it's not, it's not an obvious. It's not graves, graves. It's a, you, there's those who are humble, those humble. Well, it could be, it could be. It does, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't not work. It works. It's just not right in this case. Would have been perfect. Yeah, like enough, like Moshe Aish, Moshe Anav, Nikola Adam. Anav, yeah. But but it, again, I I think it's a good it's a good it's a good drush on it anyway. Anyway, so he says Ephraim, you were supposed to be just like Tzur. Really you were supposed to be like Tzur. You were supposed to be like Tzur, like this beautiful power. Now, what does Ephraim mean? We said it many times. What is Ephraim? The word Ephraim. What is the word hidden in Ephraim? No. Something that. It was good. It's a good, a good sign. Pool. Pool. Oh. Ephraim. That's the word in Ephraim. That's really the word in Ephraim, by the way. Okay? And we all, we also talk, what? Par. Pre. 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 Ephraim, we've talked about his power. This power of Shevet Ephraim is to be fruitful. We've had lots of kids. Do you understand the problem going on here? This is Ephraim. Who he's talking about, you're not going to have kids yet. You were supposed to be like Tidon. You were supposed to be successful, successful, successful. Everything you do is supposed to work. That's, the, the, that's what Ephraim is. It's Yosef, right? Yosef. The word Yosef comes from? Yosef. Add more. Yosef. Ephraim is the natural successor of Yosef. It's the same idea. Pre Urve. Pre. Right? Menashe is different, but Ephraim is the real successor of Yosef. Yosef is to add. Ephraim is to have a lot of. That, that's who they are. They are, and, and, and in this case, it's the opposite. Ephraim lotzi elahoreg banav. Who's going to bring his kids up? Lotzi elahoreg is to bring your kids to death. Who's going to bring? And here, there is a, says Rashi, the, the first one on the next page, on the, on the last page. Beshalvata matira, like just like I saw Tzor, Beshalvata matira vashira al kol medinot. Kachayt el Ephraim. Ephraim was supposed to be like Tzor. Shtula benave. The Ephraim magmul chilemli. What did they do? They brought their kids out to kill them to the molech. And here he's like bringing something new into the context. We haven't met the molech yet in our in our thing. What was the molech? The Molech was the Avodah Zarah of Amun, um, where they would kill their kids. You would bring your kids and kill them. Burn them. Burn them, right. The Machlok at exactly what happened there. There's the one Shita that they didn't kill them. But it seems to be pretty... Uh, whatever, I, I say there's a Machlok, but I don't want to say it's pretty clear. It's not pretty clear. Definitely one of the options of understanding the Molech, maybe the, the, the simplest one, is that they would burn their kids. They would burn their kids. There was a whole process. They would drum very loudly so you wouldn't hear, hear the kids screaming. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, this thing. But what is it? Now, if you think, right? When you think that when you, when you're go, you are giving, I better get some. I mean, when, when you go to the it's God and it's a... Exactly. If it's a go and take, I'm giving you my, my ace, my joker. And therefore, and therefore give, me, give me what I want. Right? And this is the... Depth of depravity. Depravity? Depravity. No? Something like that. What did we say is Tzur? I missed it. Tzur right. is the city. It's the city. It's the, what's, it, the, what's the meaning of Tzur? Tzur was a, it was a very, Tzur very success, is very known, very successful city at this point. It was known as like a place, just Shalva. Rashi says it sat in, in uh, a peace and Jewish. quiet. Not Jewish at all. But you, in other words, you who look at Tzur and like, huh, uh, huh, huh. You were, suppo you were supposed to be Tzur. No, Tzur really was. It was objectively, it was, uh, it was what, what are the places? Give me a place like nowadays. Like, like Roman. No, like a place that's like really nice. Nice and wealthy. Dubai. <laughs> okay, did that work? <laughs> it's like Dubai. Right, everything's easy in Dubai, everything works in Dubai, and lots of money, everything glittery and beautiful, and what, that's what you were supposed to, and they don't have no enemies, like, LA. trying to kill them, or LA, I don't know, LA is too much smog. Dubai is actually, Dubai is not a bad, right? The rare, <laughs> that's what tour was, okay, it was very successful, very successful, and, and, and everyone likes them, they, were, they, were, they weren't at, at war with anyone, Sur. No, Las Vegas, Las Vegas. Okay, Las Vegas may be a little bit like that, but I think Dubai is better in this case, 
And, and that's, that's what he said. And that's what I thought you were going to be. And there you would have priyarvia for your children, for your actions, for your success. But you bring your kids as a korban, which means be'etzem. Who is number one? Me. That's exactly what you say. If I'm willing to kill my kid for something, then I guess I'm more important than my kid. Or anything I need is more important than my kid. Was this any kid? It's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the basis. Oh, you need more kids. Huh? Or, or, yeah. So I get more. Right. I mean, what, what you, you kill one kid, and then you kill the next kid because you need something else. The crops didn't work this year. That was one kid. Next year, they're not going to work. I need another kid. I better have lots of kids. But the, the whole concept of killing my kid for myself is the worst thing you could possibly do. Right? We were talking about being immoral. We were talking about being unfaithful and how that's not going to translate well to your children. And Hashem says, forget it now. Rashi brings out here, they were killing their kids. This is the epitome of, 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 of a society that's upside down. A, real, a good society, as we know in the other way, is you plant so that your children will have fruit and your children's children will have fruit, right? I think in my days, I want my children to be successful. So I put a lot of a, a money and effort into their chinuch, into their education, because I want them to be successful more so than myself. I'll deprive myself of an X amount of lifestyle so that my children can have a better world. That's the way of the world. That's the way of understanding that the world's a good place. And I want my children to, to be successful and to have a good influence on the world. But to think that way, you're in a, in a world where you're thinking of the other. You're thinking of others and yourself. There's, you're not in the center of, of this whole picture. In this picture, it's the opposite. Is this, um, what? The end of Ephraim? Like, oh, it's, it's approaching the end of Ephraim here. They're, they're going to end very soon. And and I met, as yeah. Dor is pointing out, this prophecy yeah. actually pretty much happens. Pretty much happens. The end of our Pasuk is gonna say, the Yuno de Dimbagoyim Asem Elohai. Hashem will hate them, will disgust in them. This is the last Pasuk I jumped ahead to a couple of Psukim. The Yuno de Dimbagoyim, and they may be they be travelers in the Goyim. They and actually they're done. Ephraim really never comes back. I, I wasn't thinking of this in this process, what you're saying, Dor, but but it fits very well into these Psukim. You know, these got really harsh. Um yeah, and, and it happens too. I mean, it's not, it's not just, a, it's not just a, an empty threat. They're going to go into Galut and disappear. Are, are they going to be completely wiped out? Or are they going to just be lost and no one's going to find them until Mashiach comes? Um, different I know, right. Different, different uh, Midrashic uh, interpretations. Those will be the That's pretty well, sad. <laughs> yeah, well, right? B'nai Menashe is a statement that they were one of the tribes that was yeah, sent out. Because no? this, like, they just, like, they died out. Like, you know? like they just got lost in the world. They, they, they died out. Well, he says yeah, they're going to be taken to the going. They're going to be taken. I understand. But they're, they're going to be taken into Galut very soon. There still is an Amisa that gets taken to Galut. So, so there's some metaphoric aspect here. But 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 on the not metaphoric aspect, they really disappear. They really. They say when you don't have kids, it's like you died. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, they what? Uh, they told uh, the story of Israel, uh, something like that. They also told me, even my, still now, even they are, some of them are uh, uh, Christian, right? When there is anything like earthquake sometimes, even they are Christian, they, they have to shout, like, uh, they have to run and out, uh, run outside and get with the Bidim and say, you know, uh, on language, right? Our son are still here, and then, even though they are Christian, right? They are still here, but uh, the uh, forefather, even my father, uh, passed away right? uh, before uh, just two months. Uh, two months, but he told me that our great great father, uh, father, well, uh, we uh, we drink uh, the Torah, the score, the score, and then 
Of this, so you're saying that it was kept a tradition. Yeah, the, the custom and everything. When someone died, even the, all the custom are same, but a little bit different because it's more, it's more than more than right. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone, uh, when I when I was a little, uh, when I was a younger, yes, I thought Israel is all, uh, is all for all the world. When I read that, the Torah, but. In, there, in India, there are billions of people, right? Not a million. Right, billion. 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 Yes, billion. billions of people, but no one do the custom right. <coughs> uh, 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 not uh, follow the custom, only the... On the mercy, I understand. Now, you, that, that's one of the one of the statements. They've been kept their tradition over so many years as one of possibly these ten tribes. That's what Ezra was referencing before of how are they coming back or they're not coming back. And so, so, so maybe, maybe yes, maybe there is a there is a return that we we expect of them. But it seems to be, and for most of history, this prophecy was pretty pretty potent. So, so let's go on for a second, okay? Ten lehem Hashem, mati ten lehem. Rechem maskil, maskil v'shadayim tzomkim. So here's just uh, this. This is a really interesting pirush. Okay, ten lehem, Hashem. Give it to them. <laughs> Give it to them, Hashem. There are two different pirushim. You guys look at ten lehem Hashem. Okay, says Rashi. Hanavi mitpalel. The navi is prophesizing. Sheamutu ktanim. That they should die young. This is Hosea talking. Okay, here Hoshea is talking. We haven't actually heard Hoshea in a long time, okay? This, he's been pretty much, pretty much transferring Hashem's words. But here he says, Hashem, let him die young. When you, when it's not the same mourning process for someone who dies as a very young baby as someone who dies a little older. Um... So he says, at least, you know, if they have to be born because, you know, that's the, the nature of man, that they get born, at least kill them when they're, when they're young, when they're babies, so they don't get older and then it gets worse. This is Hosea asking for mercy, <laughs> for people. Mercy, mercy killing. Mercy kill, it's where it's, it's mercy killing. Because they're going to die anyway. He knew, Hashem said they're going to die. So he says, maybe, maybe at least have them die young and not die old. And it's, it's better. It's, every, every, it's better for everyone. Else. That's what Anavi mitpaleh. Now, now the the, the Malbim says a little other. Ten lem Anavi mesev panav el Hashem mitpaleh. Okay, he also agrees that he's going to daven. Okay, but what is he daven? Shelo yigalem bagula. Don't send them to exile, please, Hashem. Very different ways to read a pasuk, huh? What is Hosea saying? Hosea here is going against this horrible, horrible uh, prophecies that he's been giving over these past. And then now Hosea stops. Oh, where did the Malbim see this? One second, explain. Oh, okay. So that we'll see in a second. But I'm just saying, it's it's uh, for us the learners. First of all, obviously we have two different commentaries. who say almost the opposite, right? One is davening that they should, even though it's a, it's, a, it's a sense, it's a mercy. And even Rashi's perush is he's seeing it as mercy. It's not can kill him. Just kill him young. Kill them all. He's saying, listen, they're gonna die. It's better young than, than old. Let's finish it quickly and not have this done. This is what he says. But but that that Friere is whew. Rashi's perush, but in both perushim. Hoshea suddenly is a player again, which brings us back almost to the beginning of the book. You guys remember the beginning of the book? What's the very, the prequel to Sefer Hoshea is Hashem saying to Hoshea, right? My people have sinned. And Hoshea says, switch them. And then Hashem goes ballistic on him, right? And he goes, well, he and then the whole, the whole first three chapters are Hashem teaching him how much he loves Am Yisrael. 
Well, here it's not, it doesn't seem to how, be that's playing out here. How young is young mean? Very young. The womb? Yeah, womb. That's pretty young. Like, the like, on the one hand, I understand it. On the other hand, wouldn't it be better to let them at least sire the next generation before killing them off? Um, there's no continuation. They're, they're, they're all going to die. The entire family is just going to get wiped out. Every, yeah, all of Israel is going to get wiped out. Yeah. Again, this is the end. Now, you could be saying, as some people say, that he's talking in the days of Hoshea ben Elah. He's talking in the days of the last king. The last king of Israel. No, this, is, this is not a theoretical prophecy that is going to happen in a couple of years. Ashur is going to come and wipe them out. And then they die. Killing them, right? This is worse. So he's saying it's better they die in the womb. It's better they die in the womb than, than, they, than they get up and then die. They're going to die. It's not a question when. If. The question is when. Oshea is down. According to Rashi, Oshea is dominating and says, let them, die, let them die as early as they can. In the Gemara, I think it's a Gemara discussion, they discuss if it's better to be alive or not, or to not have a removed. Do they bring this? this I don't like think it's so interesting. I, I don't think this is one of the psukim that Beit Shammai says. Right? <laughs> Shalom. Right, so three years they had a vikuach. Said that, but let's see how the Malbim reads what he reads. Look at Pasuk Yudalet. Ten them, and Avim esef panav el Hashem mitpalel shelo yigalem bagula. Omer ten them Hashem matiten. It's another Omer. Ten them anon shagauil atet them be'avon aniuf. Kemoshe dar gechad iten mida kenegem mida. Shebe'avon aznut raui shiteten them rechem mashkil v'shadaim tzomkim be'inyan shelo yichlu laolid bnei znunim v'lo yichlu legadlam v'lo yitrabu mamzerim. Ze onesh raui. אבל לא עונש של גלות וגירוש מארצם שאינו מידה כנגד מידה says Marvin give ten them Hashem ten they're okay they're they're sitting so so don't have children but to actually annihilate them as a people to send them out of Israel and they'll and they'll disappear that's not midati that's not um it's not midah כנגד מידה it's worse than what what it's have them, have them have troubles in their family. They're, they're doing uh, immorality, then have them do it. It, it doesn't make sense, probably per se, because the punishment for immorality is getting kicked out of the land. In other words, he's, definitely, he's definitely asking for something um, uh, okay? He's asking something because it, it doesn't seem that this is such a good a request according to the Malbi. Whatever it is, it's interesting that this is the statement. Where okay? does Malbi bring, bring that second half of it? What with well, the He says that he says ten lam ten lam et ze the lo et ze. Okay. okay, there's no lo et ze. You're right, there's no lo et ze. But he's saying give them this. The Malbim's not gonna say like Rashi that he's asking you to kill them. That he, he can't even say that. They're like the Radak saying, saying before. Give them the killing, but don't give but then There's no what, what ten lahem Hashem Mati ten. Ten lahem midah keneged midah. Tell them that their children die, but don't send them out to Galut. So then Hashem answers. Okay, Pasuk Tetvav is Hashem answers. And He says, No. Says, the, the, um, Hashem, No, their evil has started from the very beginning, from Gilgal, the first place they came into the land. <laughs> So already from then, I've already hated them from them on their evil actions. I'm going to kick them out of my house or my home or my Eretz Yisrael. I won't love them anymore. All their ministers are off. And he's mentioned, they remember we talked about before, all the ministers are off. The, the option of doing tshuva when your leaders are off. So Ram, so in a, here he's using it as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a reason why there's no chance anymore. It seems thrown in here. Why are you mentioning their leaders now? Because if I have to make a choice, if, there's, if, they're, if they're going to be able to come back or not come back, what do they have going for them? They've been bad from the Gilgal, from the very beginning. I, I, I don't love them anymore. There's no chance for them to do chufa because they're sarim or sororim. Their, their, their leaders are evil. What, what, what chance do they have? I think the Radak says this. The people who would bring them back, hem sorerim, they're off the derech. I can't, I can't, I can't expect tshuva anymore. 
Who's going to bring them back to tshuva? Who's going to bring them back to tshuva? If the leadership is, 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 is corrupt, who's going to bring them back to tshuva? Huka Ephraim Shosham Yavesh Pri Bal Yasu. And Ephraim's been hit, and they're, 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 they're Shorasham, their core? No, no. Their roots, their roots are, are dry. They can't do Perot anymore. And even if they have children, I'm going to kill them. This is it. Right, he goes over that thing. <laughs> Rashi says, "Pre Bal Yasin lo tov lem lifot to their vote. It's not good for them to have children anymore. It's, it's enough." It's part of this Hoshea's job, also. What? To bring tshuva. To put, put tshuva. For sure. Not only to make the messages. For sure. But we also say here somewhat. When Hashem is saying, no, no, it's all finished too late. Hoshea has been, been on duty for a while now. Mm-hmm. Well, he talked about how they relate to their prophets already. He talked about that in the past. Right. Yeah, so, so they, all the prophets that have tried to rebuke throughout it wasn't these... It going to work anyway. Too... They hate them. <laughs> they, they hate their prophets. It's rough. So the... So the blessing from um, Yaakov to Ephraim didn't, 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 didn't work. The bracha to Ephraim, to Yosef. He does. That's Yoshua. That's how most Chazal say that's Yoshua who stopped the sun, and then everyone saw there was a time when Ephraim was great, and hopefully in the future there will be a time when Ephraim is great. Uh, that's the goal. Where there's Mashiach ben Yosef in the in the future, but but not 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 here. Not here. But Im asem Elohai kilo shamulo. This seems that the Navi is the Pasuk Yudzain, right? Rashi says it's not a klala. He's not. He's not saying he's cursed them. How may Hashem hate them because they haven't listened to him? He's saying this is what's going to happen. I I I I, I give up. The Malbim is very strong here. Um, the Malbim says en tikva od sheashuv lit payesimahem. On the previous pasuk, in pasuk tetvav, he says there's no chance anymore. You guys see lo osif avatam in pasuk tetvav in 15, the end of the pasuk lo osif avatam. The Malbim says en tikva od sheashuv li tpeis emehem. It's over. That's the end of the chapter. Happy times. <laughs> this chapter is. It is really bad. It ends really bad. It's, I think it's the worst one yet. Yeah, it ends the worst one yet. I think this one really, it really is a low, a low, low uh, ebb here. Um, I think we're going to stop here also. We'll stop a little early and start on this high note. And um, next chapter is also not the greatest things, but next chapter goes up. Next chapter, there's a place where you go, <gasps> okay, okay, there may be. There may be a sequel. Where's that? Hashem, Bach.